lots of good information coming. Um, you got to stay quiet, though. Please stop talking. Open up this one. All right, so here is what you need to know. You need to know that there is a, an AP exam. It's not until springtime. And it is 100% optional. It has nothing to do with your grade in this class or your tech credit or your, um, do I have it on here? I have it on the other one. Or anything for this class. It is not any extra work other than maybe some reviewing right before, but um, it, like I said, it's completely optional. It is in the springtime, uh, like May something, I think. And it, um, there's a fee associated with it. And the way that you sign up for it is by joining the section on College Board. Okay, so if you were to go to, and you don't need to do it now, because I want you to think about before, think about whether or not you want to take it before you join, because it, um, I mean, it's not terrible to cancel, but College Board loves to throw fees at you for uh, registering late or canceling after you've registered. Um, that sort of thing. But the way you would join is, or the way you would sign up for it is you join the section. So you'd go to College Board and there's some sort of join, um, join section field that you would type in the code and the code for this class is here on the spreadsheet. Once you sign up, you're, that is sign, once you join the class, you're signing up for the exam. You can change your mind before the change your mind due date, which is I think November 15. But if you change your mind after that, there's a $40 fee. And at which point you, you're almost half the way to the full cost. So uh, there's that. There is a registration letter here on the spreadsheet that will give you lots of information about dates and links to um, financial assistance, if that's for you, the way that you pay for the exam is the school pays College Board on time, and then it goes on as an obligation. So that sort of saves some issues with missing payment deadlines, but it's pretty cut and dry for due dates. Um, sort of pretty much November 5th, Looks like the time you need to decide by. Um, the reason why I didn't go over this day one is because I want to make sure people understood the difference between joining our code.org class and joining the College Board exam section. Also, for the sake of people that leave the class after one day, if they had joined the section, I have no way of getting in touch with them to uh, tell them to cancel. So that's why I waited a week or two, or three weeks, how long have we been here? To um, tell you guys about it. Um, if you look through the exam description and course description, there is a digital portfolio associated with the exam, which I think is like 40% of the exam, it changes every year. But there is a project that we are gonna do in this class for a grade, everyone's going to do it. If you decide to take the exam, you just upload that project. So it's not any extra work from that perspective. Uh, then there is the regular sit down, 75 question, multiple choice thing. And you don't really need to worry about that until it gets even close and we have plenty of review materials. It's not terror. On the spectrum of difficulty for AP classes, it is, consensus that computer science principles shades towards the easier end. 
I don't want to be too dismissive, but this doesn't need to be AP bio um, for it to be worth your time. So think about that. If you have questions, let me know, but that's a thing. And now I've given you the code to join. Uh, we'll talk about it a couple of times between now and then, just to make sure that you are um, in the right place. All right, so we finished our digital images, color or black and white and then color. Today is text compression or compression day, okay? We, this is a very fun lesson that people tend to really get into. And the idea or the goal is to understand the concept of compression. Using different algorithms, which would mean some uh, rules for what well, you'll see how it works, you can compress data to a smaller file size. There are two types of compression, and guys, this is like the crux of this entire concept, so let's focus. Lossless and lossy compression. Okay. Their names sort of describe what's going on. Lossless compression means the file size is compressed. We'll talk about how that works, but it can be completely restored to its full size without any information loss. Lossy compression throws out a bunch of data, which allows it to be compressed even further, especially if you do a lossy compression and then do a lossless compression on top of that. But it throws out data, which makes it much more compressed for all the value of that. But when you go to restore it, it will be a lower quality file. And if you've ever uploaded files from your phone to some cloud thing, and then tried to download them somewhere else, they're probably gonna be lower files, uh, lower quality uh, images, which for the most part is fine considering how unbelievably powerful phone cameras are. You don't really need uh, that quality of an image. And the smaller file size is fantastic. It takes up less storage and it, is faster to transmit uh, from any uh, way. Uh, can you hold off on the food? Thank you. Okay, so the activity for today is a, well, it, we're actually doing lesson nine and 10. Lesson 10, there's not much going on there. There isn't a um, activity or widget or that type of thing. The, there is a worksheet that goes along with it right here and an assignment for which the worksheet will end up. Same process as always, we file, make a copy and get rid of copy of and put your name, so on. Okay. And all of your answers will be on that. And when you're done with the worksheet, you will upload it. Now, what are we actually doing? We are thinking about ways that compression would work. We know it's benefit, storage size and transmission size or speed, but the way that you are going to sort of think about how you could take a file size that's big, make it smaller, but then restore it completely. And I'm not really sure why they have the widget before the video that explains how it works. Um, let's just watch the video before we do that. And let's go like this. Again, if you're watching this asynchronously, uh, that is to say later, you should probably go to uh, the bubble here and watch it on your own rather than watching it on this recording because it gets super compressed. Zoom does a crazy job of compressing. Uh, that's how it's possible to do what Zoom does. But here we go. My name is Aloe Black. I'm a singer and songwriter and entertainer. So 
when it became more and more important for artists to have a presence on the internet, I, I quickly developed the skill to you know, build a website and get online, use my knowledge of coding to make it so that people could learn more about our music. Every bit of data or information can be stored digitally. Whether it's numbers, text, pictures, music, or video, all of it can be represented digitally. That means the information can be represented by electrical signals that are on or off, or as ones and zeros, so to speak. But representing information in ones and zeros can take up a lot of space. For example, if you wanted to store a three-minute song digitally, it would take up over 30 megabytes of space. A one-hour HD video would take 800 gigabytes. In the real world, digital information is compressed to take up less space. A 30 megabyte song can be compressed down to three megabytes. An hour-long video can be compressed from 800 gigabytes down to just one gigabyte. Sometimes compression is lossy, which means that to save some space, some of the information is thrown away. For example, an image can be compressed to a lower resolution to lose some detail. Lossy compression is useful because in many cases, the human eye or ear can't even notice the details that are being lost. When you compress data without losing any details, that's called lossless compression. This means the compressed data can be decompressed back into the exact original. One way of doing lossless compression is to find patterns in the data you're trying to compress. As an extreme example, imagine a book about dogs with hundreds of pages using only one word. Each page just says dog, 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 over and over a million times. Instead of writing it all out, you could just store the pattern, dog, times one million. Now that's a silly example, but let's look at a more real example. Instead of a book, imagine the lyrics of a song. If a single word or phrase is repeated a lot, you can store that once and then reuse it without repeating the data. Let's see how this works with a simple text compression widget. This widget lets you experiment with compressing text. You want to represent the original text with as few bytes as possible. The widget lets you try compressing different ways and see it as it happens. Let's see how it works. The widget shows you some text to compress. In this example, lyrics to one of Aloe Black's songs. In the dictionary area, you can type patterns you see in the text. For now, let's just look for words that repeat. As you type in the dictionary area, a single symbol would be substituted in the main text area. In the example here, you can see each occurrence of the words I was has been replaced with a symbol of a sun, and I'm has been replaced with an umbrella. If you sent the compressed version of the lyrics to someone, you'd also have to send along the dictionary so that they could reconstruct the original text. So the question is, is the total number of bytes in the compressed text plus the bytes in the dictionary less than the number of bytes in the original text? The answer is yes for our current example, and the widget shows you how it's calculated. We assume that every character that needs to be sent takes one byte. So the display shows the compressed version of the lyrics with the symbols substituted in it has 216 bytes, or characters. It also shows the number of bytes in the dictionary as 10. This is to store the words I was and I'm, also the symbols that represent those patterns. This gives us a total of 226 bytes. We can see that the original text had 240 characters, or bytes, so we reduced the bytes needed to represent the poem by 14 bytes, or 5.8%. Not a bad start. Looking for words that repeat is a good start, but you can look for other patterns. Sometimes, a repeating pattern could be a subpart of a word, or many words. Here's where it really gets cool. You can find patterns that include dictionary symbols you just made. For example, we've replaced words I was with a sun symbol, but now you can also see that a new pattern, didn't know, sun symbol, lost. You can type this in the dictionary too. As a side note, to enter the sun symbol, you need to copy and paste it, unless your keyboard has a sun on it. With that little change, we're now up to 26% compression. Try it yourself and see if you can do better. The repetition in a song lyric or poem is obvious, but really any form of information can have repetition or patterns in it. They're just not as obvious. For example, an outdoors photo can have a blue sky, and instead of storing every single blue pixel, 
that can be compressed. With the amount of information that's digitized and sent around the internet every day, there are much fancier ways to compress the data. Data compression is now built into how every picture or song or movie is stored, and almost every web page you visit is compressed as it's sent to your device. All these compression algorithms have one thing in common. They all aim to represent the information in the smallest format possible, in a way that can be decompressed to reconstruct the original, or at least something close to it. All right, so in one second, you're going to go to the first bubble of Lesson 9. And, well, in addition to getting the uh, copy of, hold on a second, hold on, I didn't mean an actual one second. I mean, like, just wait, wait a moment, one moment. Okay, the worksheet will get you going with this. Okay, so you're going to use the text compression widget to compress the text. Uh, and then sort of try to come up with some general rules that do good, that are good for compressing, and uh, try your best at getting the lowest number. We will reconvene shortly. Um, but so on this bubble, there are several different poems to work with. And the one we're starting with is this first one, the one they were doing before. And that's the one everyone's going to work on. Not necessarily, hold on guys, hold on a second. I appreciate the enthusiasm, I really do, but clicking is distracting. And that is the one that you're working on for the front of the uh, page or the front of the worksheet. Then after we reconvene and discuss things, you're gonna do two or three of the other ones and record your best um, compression rate. The uh, some important things to note. Well, I'll just let you go ahead and get started. Okay. Lesson nine, bubble one. And try to come up with the most compressed version. Um, I think we're probably, once we get to the back of it, we will discuss or try to keep track of the best for each of them, like the records. But uh, yeah, go ahead and get started. Ethan, all right, you're good. Uh, also listen up for attendance. Uh, Antonio, is that you? Okay. Do you understand what's going on, more or less? Okay. Your uh, your neighbors are pretty with it. They can get you going, and I can answer any other questions.
keep going. So here is what you need to think about for the compression is obviously you're looking for words that show up several times, okay? Okay, just having didn't in there saves you 11% uh, right off the bat, but you might notice that every time there's a sun, there's a space afterwards. If you add a space to this, it will get you some more compression. Some of the suns have a space before them, but not all of them, which means if you do the space before it, it's not necessarily going to help. And um, there's that. So there's other things to think about in terms of longer dictionary entries tend to be better because it's one character replacing more letters from the original source. The problem is it's also how many times they are used, where, okay, didn't space saves you 14%, but guys, quiet, quiet. But space didn't only saves you, space didn't space only saves you 13.75. That is a longer dictionary entry, which is good, but you only get to use it one, two, three, four, six times, where if you get rid of that first space, uh, you get to use it one, two, three, four. How is that possible? One, two, three, four, five. You get to use it seven times. And so there's that. Other thing is, if you have something that only happens once, you are gonna lose space. So the first word here is so, and it gets replaced with a sun. So in the compressed data, we've gone from SO to just sun. That's saved one, except it's costing us three. Having that as a dictionary entry costs you two for the entry plus one for the sun, which means uh, we have, we've saved one over here, but we've spent three over here. So we're two in the wrong direction, okay? And as long as you are doing things that don't happen frequently, you are not going to uh, make up space. Now for the worksheet, uh, some important things to note, guys, listen up, just stop typing, clicking. You don't have to turn off your screen, just wait, quiet, I'll tell you. So one of the points, one of the issues with this type of thing, this type of computer science concept compression, as you get further along, you'll realize that you'll come up with a good compression rate, but it's technically impossible to know if it's the best compression because there's so many different iterations. And that's why we have a, the concept of a heuristic, okay? A heuristic is a rule of thumb that will get you most of the way there pretty quickly, okay? Um, like, I don't know how many of you are familiar with the game, probably most of you, uh, 2048, okay? So if you are playing this game, you are constantly using heuristics Okay, uh, obviously there's imperfect information, but that's a big thing. But generally, if you're choosing a direction, you wanna keep large ones together. Okay, when you start having 64s and 128s, you need to think about moving them together. Now, that might not be the best choice. This is not an excuse for you guys to play this game. It might not be the best, this is an example of a heuristic. If you've gotten to the point where you have like 128 and a 256 or something like that, the goal, the only way to progress is to make moves that keep those near to each other to make the larger numbers. That is just a heuristic. It might not be the best one, but it'll get you most of the way there and allow you to move on. In this case, with compression, we don't, we would never know, guys, just hold off a second, like self-control, no clicking, just while I'm talking. You would never know, the computer would never know if it has the absolute best compression rate for some file size, 
But if you come up with good rules, generalized rules, you can get most of the way there. And then it's better because you can just move on. If you spend all your computing time finding like a slight smidge bit better, that's not worth it. You'd rather get pretty good and keep moving and do the next thing. Okay, that is a concept uh, in computer science about coming up with something that's good enough when the absolute best isn't really knowable. Like even if you do get the best, you could spend more time looking for a slightly better one and not know you already have the best. Uh, so there's that. The uh, what we're gonna do is we'll try to come up with the best. I'll, I'll make a chart and we'll come up with like the record who can come up with the best compression rate for each of these and have sort of a, a challenge situation. Um, we will spend a few, well, let, let's talk about uh, lossy compression so we can get that done and then spend the rest of the time on um, the stuff. Guys, go ahead. just screens off, okay? It was nice when we had a chance. Just go ahead and screens off and uh, we'll talk about it. So lesson nine doesn't have as cool of a widget. It's really just this, um, this app that allows you to compress this image to slightly more. And uh, the point is just like to assess it and be, um, you know, this is a lower quality image, but it takes up less space. Not really much there. The basic idea is that uh, lossy compression throws away data, but can make it much a much smaller compression. That's this, the basic idea. And there is a check for understanding. Uh, I know we didn't spend much time on it, but it's still the same idea. Uh, you've been given a new cell phone with a two gigabyte data plan. Plan to use your phone for text messages, images, video, and music. Which of these categories are best compressed with lossless? And which of these categories are best compressed uh, using lossy data or lossy compression? Okay, so you just have to do the check for understanding for this. If you're not sure about that, you can do a little research or discuss it. But the lesson 10 check for understanding is part of this assignment, um, along with the uh, check for understandings for uh, lesson nine, um, which are more specifically about uh, lost list compression. The key takeaway is that you know the difference. The names are not made up. It makes sense. Lost list, there's no loss. Loss E, there is loss. Um, and the benefits, and it's really about trade offs. Obviously, you want the smallest compression, but maybe you want all of the uh, information to be reconstituted. Okay, so you can go ahead and get going, try to come up with your best. If you think you have a good um, compression rate, let me know and we'll keep track of the best and we'll keep track of the best for uh, each class. Okay, so proceed. <laughs> 